thank you, Chris. I actually also represent Winniconnet because I do yes. represent the people of Seabrook. Oh, so when I go to the Winniconnet Exeter games, if they're in Exeter, I stand on the Exeter side. Sorry, I'm an Exeter girl. However, if I go to Winniconnet, I stand on the 50 yard line and work very hard to stay. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and I will tell you that those games are some of the best demonstrations of what our school system sometimes have to offer. I've watched those kids play their hearts out. You know, ties at the 11th hour, I think it was two or three years ago, an overtime game that was extraordinary. And at the end of the day, it really is true. It wasn't about who won. It was about what those kids learned on the playing field, about grit and determination and sportsmanship. Come today at 7 o'clock at what kind of high school? All right. Actually, no. That's something else I have to do. Um, look, I wanted to thank you for letting me crash the Hampton Democratic uh, uh, event, as you guys so generously do year in and year out. Um, I also wanted to thank Granny D for being here, for coming over here, for loving her country and her state well enough uh, to keep on going. And thank you. <laughs> I also want to thank everybody here who's running for office at all levels. Uh, running for office is indeed um, difficult. It is also an extraordinary privilege and opportunity. And it is what New Hampshire, in particular, is all about. So I'm so grateful, uh, not only to the candidates, but to the wisdom of the uh, Hampton Democratic uh, Organization to invite people from both political parties uh, to talk um, for the local elections, because I think it's just a demonstration of what true democracy, with a little d, is. Um, I had kind of a talk all prepared, um, which uh, Ray Buckley always asked me to give, which is to urge all of you as active Democrats um, to uh, be sure to renew your spirit and your grit for the upcoming 2010 election season. Um, I'll also note that we have two special elections going on in the near future throughout the state where we could use your help. One for a state senate up in District 3 um, and one for a state rep office out in Salem. But, you know, Raymond wanted me to talk a little bit um, in a number of venues about the challenges of the 2010 election season. And I'm just going to remind you all that uh, we're in an economic recession. 2010 is coming, and we probably are not going to be fully out of this by 2010, which makes it tough for the party that's in the majority. Um, and it's also going to be tough in New Hampshire because for the first time since 1994, we're not going to have a whole lot of presidential primary hopeful candidates coming in here to help us finance local and state elections. So it's going to be up to us in 2010 to keep our majorities and build on them. And I just wanted to kind of put that in the back of your head. This is not a time to rest on our walls. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, but I had a day yesterday that kind of changed a little bit about my thoughts about how to talk here today. And it was, it really came about the following way. Um, as many of you may know, uh, the House of Representatives has already passed a law, uh, again for the second time uh, in four years, to require adults in New Hampshire to wear seat belts while driving. We are the only, um, we're the only, we're one of, I think, I think we're the only state in the country that doesn't have either a primary or, or a secondary law uh, to do that. And, um, you know, I would tell you that when I first came to Concord in 2004, uh, mandatory seatbelts was not on my agenda. I'm one of those people who kind of thought, well, you know, it, it's a good thing to do. I always wear my seatbelt, but I don't know that we need a law for it. It's not necessarily part of New Hampshire's culture to do it. And I don't think it's something um, I should worry too much about as an elected official. I think New Hampshire folks can take care of this uh, without the legislature telling them what to do. Um, as I have gotten uh, more facts under my belt, uh, so to speak, under my seat belt, I suppose, um, about the way cars today are made, the importance of seat belts, and the overall safety um, planning that our car designers, engineers, and producers have, um, and as I've learned about the number of fatalities in New Hampshire that are directly related to people not wearing their seat belts, or the number of serious injuries and the cost to all of us, uh, not only to the people who get the injuries to their families, but to us as taxpayers, um, I've become a convert. And this is all by way of saying that what, what we're now going to face in the Senate is we have a Democrat, a Democratic majority, but we're not entirely unified on seatbelts. 
And I don't know what's going to happen with the seatbelt law. I personally support it. Some of my colleagues do not. Some of my colleagues come from districts where people um, feel very fervently that um, the Nancy's Live Free or Die motto does not uh, fit well with a mandatory seatbelt law. Um, what is important to me as we go through the discussion on this bill, and there will be other ones, is not really whether this bill passes this session or not. What's important to me is the conversation that we have and the way we go about it with our fellow citizens in the next couple of months as this comes up. As I think Billy pointed out, um, this is the most democratic with a small d place on earth. No place else do 1.3 million people have 424 elected officials who work as volunteers. No place else on earth. It is an extraordinary place to be. It is an extraordinary honor to serve. 